Good old StreamYard behind. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Welcome to Something the Sasquatch about. Today's guest is, I think, best described, even he'd agree, a Bigfoot enthusiast, Kevin Llewellyn. Kevin, how are you, sir? Great. How are you doing? I'm awesome, man. We've always had a blast communicating. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, we, we get going yeah. on Messenger. And this, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. But, uh, how I found Kevin is um, good old Google, okay? And what you do is, all you do is put in Bigfoot researchers, right? And Google has that big line of numbers at the bottom. And I kept going. I'm like, no, no. And then Kevin Llewellyn's name pops up, someone I've never heard of. And the podcast was Stephen Major's podcast. Popped up. I said, I never heard of him either. And I watched the video and I said, I like this Kevin guy. And then you pulled out this cast of a track you casted in May 14th of 2020 in Yakima, Washington. And there was a certain angle it hit where I went, oh, that's pretty, that, that's not bad. And I was like, all right. I, I, so I looked up a little bit more. I went to your Facebook. I messaged you and you're like, yeah, sure. I'll come on the podcast. And um, basically, you were um, scouting an area for a future expedition. You come up this road, and there's a, a boulder that's kind of partly on the road and partly on the grass. And you're trying to get by, and you see something. It leaps across the road, and the person you're with, and you stop and go look, and then you see impressions and you cast this. And now Cliff Barackman has the cast and he's displaying it. And it's pretty neat. Let's see if I can do it. Where is it? There we go. Let's see. Woo! There we are. I'll even zoom in. Yeah, well, thanks for having me back uh, on your podcast. And <clears throat> and yeah, we we'd been in this area before. Uh, my friend and fellow investigator, and we'd heard some some strange things and, you know, some possible vocalizations. And um, and then, like I say, yeah, we were scouting uh, for a future expedition site and uh, this road that we were uh, climbing in elevation and it was getting overgrown. The tree boughs were, you know, growing out into the road. And uh, I came around this corner and I look up ahead and in that photo, there that I took and, and on the left, you can see how the, how the hillside goes up to the left. And then of course, on your right, the, the, it's a drop off, uh, the embankment goes down fairly steep and, uh, they cut these mountain roads just right in, you know, to the hillside. And, uh, so I see that large boulder up ahead and I saw some black between it and, and the hillside in that little notch, that little V, but you know, there's, black decaying pieces of wood all over in the forest and you know I didn't think much of it and and uh, then the road narrowed right there and uh, to get around that boulder and so my I was approaching that boulder and my focus went to the road to to get my truck uh, around there and all of a sudden this figure leaps out from behind that boulder and it landed and there's a little bit of um um, let's see here. Yeah, right, right in there where your icon is. Um, there's a, a gap in the trees that goes down a hill, and uh, and it, it the like I say, those tree boughs sticking out. Um, it paused, and it must have landed in like a crouched position too, because I just see like a, a black butt. And when it and when it leaped across the road, you know, it wasn't. Well, of course, I had to process all this in my mind, but, you know, it, it, it wasn't a bear. It couldn't have been a bear because I didn't see any front legs. The arms were back along the sides of it, and uh, like one uh, hand or fingers were even sticking up in the air. And so I had, you know, like I say, that confused me. I had to process all that. But anyway, um, we when we stopped and, and my friend and fellow investigator he was in the car behind in his car behind me and we got out and he actually saw there on the edge of the road then uh, a couple just 
kind of impressions at the edge of the road, like where two feet maybe hand, landed. But then down over the uh, embankment there on the hillside uh, was two marks. This one was like where a foot slid. And then further below it was just a skid mark. And just like, you know, just like say skid in the dirt. But this one, then we walked down and yeah, there's the big toe. So it would, if you flip the cast over, it would be a right foot. So the big toe though is over here to the outside on this, on, mm -hmm. on the cast. So, you know, we noticed it's like, well, there's a big toe, but then over here, um, there's like a little toe that's splayed. And so, and it pushed dirt up in front um, and back behind the heel uh, is the skid mark. I tried to cast, uh, get that in the cast and cast that too. But yeah, it pushed up dirt in front of it. And we looked and, and, and I, of course, I like to say, I'm like, wow, there's, you know, you, you can't see all the toes because it's not in mud. It's on a hillside, a steep hillside. But I look at there and that, like I say, that one little toe kind of splayed and it's like, well, there's action there. You know, there's anatomy there. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and I always try to take pictures, uh, you know, lay down my rulers and, and take pictures from different angles uh, of possible tracks. Well, I slipped and, and uh, slid on my hip downhill and uh, because as I say it was steep and so I uh, yeah and, and so I just said forget pictures you know I gotta go mix up the cast material and then my cast material starts running downhill and I start to panic mm -hmm. like oh this isn't going to turn out um, but it did it, it turned out well and yeah lucky by a little bit of luck a little <laughs> bit of miracle to just you know to get the cast material to stay and uh and not just run all out of the track so practice you know i practice on i've got casts of, of cougar and bear um turkey even i got got a cast of uh, of a hen and the little polt the uh, little baby turkey tracks behind it and uh and just you, they look like miniature dinosaurs or something, you know, in, in the cast. And so just for <laughs> yeah. fun, you know, and so that's where practicing uh, on anything, then, uh, then, you know, right. Yeah. How, what consistency of your, of the casting material <clears throat> to get and, um, and go from there. Yeah. And how long? So I'm glad, I, glad I'd been practicing over the years because like I say, doing that on a steep hillside, you know, was that your first cast or you casted other possible? I've casted tracks? others, but, you know, but they don't, I mean, I have one actually from the same general area. I have one and, and it's, oh, it would, it would have been perfect except the toes landed on a stick. And so <laughs> you can see where the, where off the ball of the foot, you can see it takes that dip then and where the toes landed where they would have been you can almost kind of maybe see where one toe is at um but the toes landed on a stick uh, and of course that's the way it goes in the forest and uh, oh but then that was in pretty soft ground kind of muddy ground that would have been a fantastic cast um but it's kind of inconclusive because you know again the toes landed on a stick yeah, you don't have everything you want. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. You know? why don't they, yeah, why can't they just walk through mud, you know, all yep. the time? Make it easy. Yeah. Go so. by the creek, step in the mud bank or whatever. Thanks. <laughs> that, would, that would be nice. You know how many times I see people, though, you know, uh, because of water flow and the way the substrate is? Oh, look at the footprint. Uh-oh. <laughs> we have a problem. <laughs> But of course, I, I I reserve. I don't I don't say anything mean. And I'm like, no, that's just the way the substrate is and how the water is flowing. No, it's not. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And there's you know there's a lot of of misidentifying the double bear steps. You know, double uh, double step uh, bear tracks. Um, and you know, people just. You know, they, they'll think that they're Bigfoot and that, but, but I look at pictures and it's, and I'm like, 
boy, that looks like a bear double step, you know, but I don't even comment, you know, on, on pictures because I wasn't there. I wasn't mm -hmm. able to examine it. And, you know, I mean, I get down on my knees and my hands and knees and get my face right over a possible track. Um, there I, brings to mind one time, a uh, fellow investigator and, and myself, we, we were camping and he spotted one down by the little stream. And I don't know how long we spent studying that thing. And it was like, and I was about ready to get the cast material. And then it was like, you know, no, you know, that looks, there, that looks like a bear claw. That looks like maybe where a claw landed right there, you know? And mm -hmm. I think that's, yeah, I think it's bear, but, but like I say, you know, you really got to study them. And so, but when in doubt, cast them. But uh, yeah, a lot of, a lot of what you're going to find are, are bear double step and, yeah, they're sneaky, huh? If what what is your position anyway on Sasquatch? Is it something that could exist, or or you? Is that where where you go with it? Oh yeah, there's there's too many eyewitnesses uh, to all be wrong. You know, um, some of them, some of them are mistaken um, identity, if or, or a hoax or something. But um, but yeah, there's too many uh, witnesses out there. And, and to all be wrong, uh, there's something out there, um, uh, you know, yeah, I, and, and, and I think their population numbers are low, uh, and, and compared to other things, I mean, other wildlife and, and even chimpanzees, um, you know, looking at the, I don't know if we want to get into this all right away, but, um, but, you know, looking at, that the behavior of chimpanzees and, and, and that and, and their clans and, and that that they have, you know, someone will say, well, there's this aggressive Bigfoot clan out there that's running off other Bigfoot. Well, I, I was a veterinarian for 35 years. And, and so I approach things with biology and science, you know, and so and I'm like, so there's a clan out there and that that doesn't want other Bigfoot around uh, or, or coming into it. So there's too much inbreeding would be going mm. on. You know, this doesn't make sense to have uh, the continuation of a species, which is in low number anyway, you know, uh, so I don't, I don't buy that then about, you know, uh, I sure as, as a, is the, is a, if there's a family unit is an alpha male going to run off a, a younger male when it's, you know, when he gets old enough, um, sure. But then that younger male, if he's going to take off and migrate and go search for a girlfriend to start his own family mm -hmm. unit. And you know, that's why I think a lot of these, even these, maybe these highway crossings, um, are they just young males that are, traveling who knows how far and and migrating and looking to start their own family unit then looking for a, a female that's out there um, similar in age or whatever um so yeah um you know they i think they they move around uh even within their even their family units uh will or a family unit will move around migrate um, a couple of years ago, I found a study and uh, it was kind of interesting. It was on mule deer in Wyoming and mm -hmm. they were, they called it landscape memory or terrain memory. And the older deer that, uh, you know, the older doe and that, that would migrate and, and have their migration routes, uh, they would do the same thing year after year. And if something <clears throat> would happen to those older ones, like a disease or whatever, the younger ones did not, you know, quite follow the migration route. They didn't know where to go. Sure, they would move, but they didn't follow this migratory route that, you know, the certain herds that they were looking at and, and tracking, um, that the older, like I say, the older ones in the herd would follow that migration route all the time. So I think, hey, well, does Sasquatch have landscape memory? Do they know the terrain and, and have the landscape memorized? I would sure think so. You know, I think they're going to move around and, and, and they know 
where to go. Uh, and, and like people that have uh, activity on their property certain times of the year. Well, to me, that's basic migration. You know, they've moved there for some reason and, and they keep coming back year after year, maybe to somebody's acreage, somebody's farm. And, they, you know, they're there for a reason. And then they'll, you know, migrate away, move away. Right. Well, why not? I mean, they're, they're not going out in the forest and doing nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah they're, yeah. they're going to, you know, they're going to, they're going to be where the, the most uh, nutritious uh, food is uh, for them. Um, I mean, like I've been this spring and we've had a lot of rain here in the Pacific Northwest. And, and so I've been doing day hikes, you know, and exploration that way during the day, which I think is important to get out and do those uh, that daytime uh, exploration and and what i'm looking for then and when in between these rain systems uh what i'm looking for is like you know where's the other wildlife uh looking for fresh bear scat uh fresh moose tracks um you know what elevation are the moose at uh, because an adult moose is eating 40 50 60 pounds of vegetation per day what if Bigfoot eats some of that same vegetation? Or the animals. So, yeah. So where, yeah. What, where, where are the animals? What are they finding, you know, to, you know, keep themselves healthy and what, what are they finding nutritious to eat? And, um, and of course, you know, and then deer too, you know, if the deer are moving up in elevation and things like that, uh, you know, if, if Sasquatch loves venison, um, but, um, but, uh, but yeah, you know, but, but yeah, like here in the Pacific Northwest, like say, like the moose, um, you know, all the vegetation that they're eating, what if Sasquatch eats some of the same things? Yeah. I mean, well, you know, sometimes I think people overestimate the heights when they see one out of whatever psychological fear is going on. Generally, I don't think Sasquatches are as tall as tall as being reported. That's why I usually don't have, you know, um, like the Patterson Gimlin film. Some people are saying now that they've shown that Patty was 6'3". I actually have no problem with that. <laughs> because generally, you know, I've heard people, you know, and, and I believe them, you know, they saw not a big Sasquatch, but a slender one that was about six foot two. Mm-hmm. And the first time this, come on, right? But the more you dig into it, there's been many descriptions like that. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm like, it's not impossible that these things are just between six, six feet. What if the females are generally like, like um, females generally are shorter than the males? Sure. And well, and then come in all different sizes then too. Um, you know, what I saw uh, jump in front of me, you know, it, it looked as if I was standing on the sidelines and I was watching a linebacker lunge to tackle a quarterback. And so it was not upright because like it, it leaped and I just had to, to like I say, give an estimate uh, that it looked like a typical linebacker in football, you know, maybe 6'4" you know, 240 pounds or something, just based on, I'm just, like I say, basing it on um, like what a typical linebacker would look like. So, uh, but, but you, you need to try to do, if you, if you're not too freaked out, if you, you, then you need to try to do a recreation. If you can, you know, go back to the area or whatever. Um, I mean, I was with a fellow investigator one time and, and this coyote was really doing some strange things and you know i won't go into the into details but but it moved off to the east and and then it started coming back and was howling and and my friend was looking at this gap in the trees to the east and i was looking more to the northeast at another gap and all of a sudden he said did you see that and he said it was upright and <clears throat> black and upright and i said well it, you know just to question what i said well was it a moose and he said it was no moose and you know i could tell by the look on his face so 
Well, I went up there and, you know, and did, I said, you stay right here, you know, where we were standing and watching and I'll go up there and do a recreation and we'll get a, you know, a height estimate. And so that's where if you can, you know, go back and, and do a recreation, that's then you then you can see what height and, and where did it where did it go? Uh, for example, in this case, it, it went behind this gigantic fir tree. And there was a major game trail that went to the east, right to the east mm -hmm. of that tree. And we didn't know about that game trail. But when I got up there to do the recreation, it was like, oh, well, this is what it did. It went behind this fir tree and then it turned and went back due east. And, you know, so it just disappeared on him, uh, mm -hmm. you know, on my friend, that he didn't see it step out the other side of the tree or go through any brush or anything like that. Well, that's because it turned and right behind that tree and then went down that game trail where it was hidden that we didn't see it so he saw it like I say go through the through the gap and it was upright and uh we got uh, did a recreation you know i know how how high i can reach with my hand what my fingertips are when i extend my arm up and so if you if you know how high you can reach it like that then you can you know, do a recreation for somebody else. Yeah. I, the, some people just don't do them. And I'm like, well, if you can get back there, you know, why not? But I think, you know, some people, they just believe what they believe and that's that. And you have to accept it or else you're a Sasquatch snob. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm not a Sasquatch. Look, I host a podcast, okay? It's called Something the Sasquatch About. You know? Yeah. I'm in it for the liars, man. That's that's who I that's who that's who those are the only people I, I when I do a show that I go after. A show yeah. like that, I go after liars. <laughs> people are taking advantage of people. And yeah. some people who don't know better. And they deserve their voices heard too. Well, if you can remember to get video, press the record button so that, you know, you can get some movement or maybe by the time, you know, your your camera comes on or, or, or it starts recording, you know, maybe that figure's already moved through the gap in the trees, but maybe you can get a little bit of the back end of it or something. Maybe you can see an arm swing, um, but, but then you got video rather than just pictures and blurry pictures um but yeah get get some video and, and uh, yeah um the blurry pictures drive me crazy so you know get video and then you can do a recreation you know then then you can video somebody else going up there and you can say oh you know well yeah it was this much taller and you know et cetera, et cetera. and so by doing that with with video um that that's what we need to keep doing. Yeah, well, yeah, you never know what you're going to catch. Exactly. Yeah. I've heard some strange noises people send, but you know, it's kind of like how long do I want to go through this because I'm pretty sure it's an owl. Do I want to spend my life trying to find the specific owl? Can I just get close enough? And a lot of people are like, no, you have to find the exact match. I'm like, damn it. Yeah. So I wind up doing doing that once in a while. And after a while, I'm just like, dude, I think it's an owl. So there's an idea for you. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I do find the exact match, but you gotta understand there's I don't have a lot of time to 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 go through it for people, but some people have some weird stuff, man. And I'm just like, okay, it's weird. You know, and most of them don't say it's Sasquatch or anything like that. They're just like, it's suspect, you know? Yeah, we need, we need more, more of the, the, the audio people. We need more, more people that, uh, that know all the different animal sounds out there, you know, and, the, and we need more comparisons uh, to be done with, the, with the audio. And, but your, you know, your mind plays tricks on you. You know, uh, there were several of us last year. We got fooled by some owls because, you know, they woke us up. And and I then I thought too. The first thing I thought was, that's a whoop and a prolonged mm -hmm. whoop. 
it sounded in my mind like, you know, it was several seconds long. And of course, you know, coming out of a sleep and that. And uh, but then I listened to my audio and it's like, oh, that's like only like three or four seconds of an owl, you know, going. and but yeah. yeah, when you're when you're coming up out of sleep, your your mind is like, you know, wow, you know, how long was that? Yeah. You know, well, hey, that's happened to me a couple of times, not with Sasquatch, but with like paranormal stuff. And, you know, you kind of got to settle down and go, all right, what's the explanation? here? That's how my mind works. It, it's not a dismissal. It was more like, you know what? You freaked yourself out and now it's time to think logically and rational about the situation. Yeah. You know, because you could you could freak your out, yourself out so bad you could put yourself into almost shock. Well, and yeah, it's like, oh, boy, it's not fun when, when you get that close either, man. It's not fun because now you freak out to the, yourself that you're you're almost hyperventilating. You're, you're you know, you're not doing well. <laughs> and I, I did the one sinful thing that I that I that I try not to do. I ran right to social media and posted about this experience and stuff. And of course, everybody in the comments made it about themselves and everyone started arguing. And I'm like, wait a second. This is my story, damn it. It's not about you. And I was like, yeah, oh, that's social media. That's when I gave up on Facebook. You know, I just, I have the messenger because I, I like some people. <laughs> I like a lot of people, actually. <laughs> but uh, I was just like, you know, it can really have an impact on how you think. Yeah, it's, we, we, we need to have, like I say, we need to have more backup things. Um, you know, uh, uh, you know, but keep those audio recorders going. And, and, and then, like I say, you know, try to press the record button to get video um, and keep investigating. I like that word investigator because it implies, you know, being a detective and doing de detective work. And, um, and uh, so we got the, the a squirrel chirp sometimes sounds like a rusty hinge <laughs> who has a door out here. Yeah. Well, yeah. oh, I've heard some squirrels that just, I mean, yeah, they get going and it just, it sounds like, you know, it almost sounds like gibberish too. It almost sounds like they're talking or something. And mm. so, yeah, it, you know, you can really be the different sounds out there. So yeah, like I say, you know, keep the audio going though. And uh, I always say with, with audio is that it just kind of confirms what, you know, or, or, or cancels out what you like to say, we, we thought we had some whoops last summer, mm -hmm. but, um, but, um, but the audio can confirm, you know, what you're hearing, what's going on. Um, for again, like last summer, another example, um, that right at dark, <clears throat> right after dark, they, there was oh, about three guys or so, three or four, and they were hearing wood knocks and, uh, you know, like one from the south and one from the southeast. And it's like they were answering each other. And I said, well, how many did you hear then? How, you know, what, what um, uh, was it just one each time? And they were answered and they said, yeah, you know, they went three times for six total. Well, I listened to my audio and I counted 11 that I mm -hmm. could hear. So, you know, they didn't hear all of them you know, that there was to hear. So yeah, keep the audio going and, and it can confirm what, you know, what you're hearing out there. Yeah. Or, I have, <laughs> I have, I have a, I have a, a bastard squirrel in my backyard and I call him that because there's one, I was outside with the dog playing Frisbee and the dog likes when me and my mother throw the Frisbee to, and he just runs around the yard because he's weird. And I'm standing there, and, and, and I get hit with something. I look down. The fucker threw a, an acorn at me. <laughs> it didn't drop from the tree because I'm not even under the tree. Whoa. He threw it at me. I'm like, you little bastard. What? Right? So, so another time I'm sitting there, I got hit with a not a big stick, but this little stick. I'm like, all right, listen, you up there. <laughs> I'm, every time I see you, I'm going to let my dog out. That's it. They're too quick, though. 
Oh, yeah. yeah but... He's a German Shepherd. He can't get him. I'm like, you're not a German Shepherd, pal. You can't catch a squirrel? <laughs> but the birds are even dumber. They just sit in the ground. They let him out, and they're sitting there. And I'm like, all right, he's going to get a bird one day. <laughs> but there's this guy on YouTube. He he did this um, thing with chipmunks. He was recording chipmunks, and he said, geez, it does sound like some of those faint wood knocks people get. And I was listening to it. I'm like, oh, that make, that does sound like it. And then some of them, he's like, he recorded them going crazy for like five minutes straight. Just whatever they're doing with their mouths, making noises and stuff. It, it just sounded like wood knocks. But then it just keeps going. You're like, oh, okay, that's a chipmunk. Huh, yeah. But if they do it, you know, like once or twice, I could see someone going, hey, I just heard a faint wood knock. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that's really interesting. Because even, I guess even he started out like, what the hell is that? Huh. But, wow. And that's what he does. He he has all kinds of birds. He films beautiful areas. I forgot the name of the channel, but YouTube likes to remind me of what I once watched. You know, that's what they do. And I'm just like, you know what? There's people out there with explanations. So maybe sometimes people can go outside the Bigfoot world and go, hey, listen to this. Or, hey, look at this. What do you think? Rather than staying within their bubble. <clears throat> yeah. And you if know. you can get if you can get more than one wood knock, you know, if you can get something else, then um like you say, something that just, you know, with their mouth or a vocalization or or just a tree cooling off, uh popping or something. Um and so I was <clears throat> excuse me, I always like to say, you know, if you can get two or more different things in an encounter, you know, did did you get wood knocks? and a whoop or something, you know, did you get wood knocks and a howl? Um, did you find tracks the next morning? Um, you know, if, if you can get more things like that, uh, two or more things, th then that's going to tip the, the scale in favor of Sasquatch. Yeah. The other thing sometimes though, is people find one print, one print where there should be like, you know, a whole row, you know, <laughs> And I was just like, um, okay, there's two options here. Well, three, actually. It's something to do with the substrate. Somebody screwing with you. Or you made it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, but, there, yeah what there, else am I supposed to think? Yeah. <laughs> It, I think, like I say, it's going to be, you know, substrate and, uh, and that the, the hardness of the ground. I mean, um, I've seen tracks, you know, on, on trails or, or, you know, crossing trails or forest service roads and things like that. And it's like, you know, and, and I'm not even talking about something that might be a possible uh, Bigfoot track, uh, just, you know, uh, whatever, a deer, elk. And, and it's like, and you see a couple and then it's like, but then, you know, where's the other one, you know? And, and then I look faintly and it's like, okay, well, okay, there may be another one there. And then, but then the substrate just, you know, they just uh, don't leave any kind of impression, any kind of a track then too, as the substrate changes. Right. What's going on? Oh yeah. <laughs> one mouse took Brent's SUV hostage for hours. Brent's the guy who lives in Washington too. And <laughs> He got a mouse in his SUV one time. <laughs> yeah. I thought the video was on YouTube somewhere. It was just funny. Yeah. Well, I had I had one in in uh, in my truck once up in the engine too, and and uh, I got home and and uh, I went to add um, the uh, windshield uh, fluid and uh, the hose the, I pour it in and it pours right down onto my driveway and I'm looking and the uh, the little tube who had been chewed by a chipmunk or a squirrel or something uh, up in there after I got back from camping and, um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like those, <clears throat> those varmints. Uh, I'm going to, he won't be able to get out now, Sasquatch. You got him. <laughs> 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 Come get him. How long have you been doing this, Kevin? What's the Bigfoot enthusiast in you? When did when did he finally shine? Well, what hit me was um, um, uh, I'm in Spokane, Washington, and uh, in when I was ten years old, 
uh, in Spokane, Washington, uh, was one stop on Roger Patterson's tour of uh, showing the film. And uh, he toured around the Pacific Northwest uh, a little bit with the film. And uh, I went to see that. My oldest sister um, and, and her husband took me. And, you know, they showed then the clip, the film. And, you know, I was just, the first thing that went through my brain was, you know, look at that animal. You know, that, that's not a person in a suit. You know, look at that animal move. And I was just fascinated, you know. And so, and then I started, you know, saving newspaper clippings, you know, looking for anything Bigfoot like that. Um, through the years, just, you know, uh, listening, keeping my ears open for uh, anybody that said that, you know, they heard about a sighting, you know, and I'm like, you know, well, what time of day, you know, where was it? And mm -hmm. uh, just, yeah. And just, you know, so pretty much lifelong uh, enthusiasts like that. And so I just, I had to get some, some thoughts down. And, and about four months ago, I did self-publish a, a little book. Um, it's a collection of short stories. It uh, is a mixture of, uh, of true things, uh, but then also keep reading through it because then my sense of humor takes over. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I would like to say that I, I could would guarantee that you're going to get some chuckles out of it, but I don't want to guarantee anything. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, I wanted it, wanted, <clears throat> I wanted it to be different. Uh, and uh, like I say, have some fun with it. I had a blast writing it. And so, yeah, it's, it's called incessantly big footing, lighthearted stories from a lifelong Bigfoot enthusiast. Uh, the cover should be pretty easy to recognize because I took the photo. It's the sun setting behind Mount Rainier in Washington state. And so um, ah. there's, there it is. And if I open it up like this, then you can see all of Mount Rainier. Oh, that's neat. So, um, so anyway, available on Amazon, um, quick, a quick read. And, but yeah, like I say, I wanted to get some, some things down that, uh, you know, that here's how I got going and here's the things that I did, uh, saving articles and that, um, I signed up for Roger Patterson's, uh, he called them bulletins. Uh, so these newsletters or bulletins, uh, would come out, uh, about three a year, um, three or four a year. And I signed up for those to get those. And I saved those. I put those away. And then, and last year I did donate them to Cliff Berrickman and the, his North American Bigfoot Center. So they are originals, you know, um, they're not photocopies or anything. And like I said, I tucked those away, um, in my original membership certificate and uh, the you know that i that he sent out and uh it was like six dollars a year then um i had one envelope that had the postage stamp on it it was six cents was the postage stamp and so i wanted to do something with those uh, i talk about that in in my little book too that you know i i, I needed to get those somewhere so that they mm -hmm. could be seen by other people a uh, little bit of history uh, out there like that and so yeah last year i donated them question for my buddy steve curious cryptid i think i may have met this fellow was kevin at medellin falls in 2020 just as the virus was starting to get big adam davies was there well or, or last year 2021 um uh, yeah, that would have been, that was the first Medellin Falls Bigfoot Festival. And so, yeah, um, 2021, yeah, I was there. Oh, 2021 was the first yeah, year? 2021. I don't think they had, I don't think they had one in 2020. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, Adam, no, they did one in 2020. Okay, well, right then up. he wasn't there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was last, yeah, I was there last year. It would have been great if you were because you're personable and approachable. Um, I was there last year. Adam Davies was there last year. Adam Davies um, always makes those things. So. <laughs> <laughs> this crowd ain't an Adam Davies fan. Um, <laughs> 
How would you? How do you navigate? Because you're probably more of a, a, a peacekeeper than, than someone like me would be. <laughs> like, because you have to be around people that you may not believe, and not believing someone do- doesn't necessarily mean they're lying. They're just kind of stretching their experience, and they're stretching their supposed sightings and stuff. And I, Brent, I think has probably a similar perspective as you would where, well, you know, you can go out with people who have different beliefs and ideas than yourself. And you just kind of, you know, you keep it peaceful and and you just kind of try to figure out where they're coming from, how they're thinking. Yeah. I, well, I, I, you know, have an open mind, but yet, but yet my approach is though, uh, you know, well, how do we explain things biologically? Um, I think, you know, we can, we can come up with, with biological, you know, answers or explanations for a lot of things. Um, but, and then, and then, yeah, you know, I'll have a discussion with anybody. Um, and, and, you know, I, they may have seen something and, <clears throat> and I wasn't there. I didn't, didn't see what, what they saw, but, yet I want to have a discussion with them and, and keep quizzing them um, and see then, are they, are they hoaxing something, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So the more you can engage with them and, and yeah, and keep going over, uh, over the details, um, you know, that, that's where, that's what I, that's what I want to see is, or, or want to hear about is the details. And so, but yeah, um, but like I say, yeah, that we, we, we need to do better, uh, you know, stop the blurry pictures. Um, <laughs> um, so, but otherwise, yeah, like I say, uh, yeah, it's like, you know, um, I'll have a discussion with anybody and, and, you know, just what did, what did you see? What did happen? I saw it come uh, out of a portal, Kevin. Yeah, well, um, then we're going to have take a lot of time here and go over <laughs> the details. <laughs> OK. Um, and so that was the, the one that, yeah, the one that, 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 yeah, that opened up in Oregon. OK. Supposedly like night after night. OK. So these figures, well, yeah, I would have a lot of questions about details. Uh, a lot right. of questions come to mind. And so, yeah, I would want to want to have a discussion and want to know about uh, all these details and and go over it and then go over it again. And so, yeah, but, but yeah, I would say, but so they're, you know, they're moving through uh, portals. Well, like, why are, why are they here eating our salmon and our deer? And, you know, I mean, I've heard Cliff Berrickman say, say that that's like, well, you know, don't they have any food over in the other side of wherever <laughs> they're going, wherever they go? I, you know, I mean, I what you know, it's like it, no, uh, it's forest list. There's yeah, no I, forest in the well, in that yeah. dimension, so they have to come here, fill up, and then they can go back. Then they go back. Well, that's why go my... back? But why go back? If we have, I don't such, know. If we I, have that's, such... that's where I ran into problems. I'm like, well, let me try and work this out myself, and I'm yeah. like, I can't. I know that's that's why I say it's like okay I, I'm biologically and, and scientifically I'm like okay well you know if our salmon is so good and, and our and we have so many deer so much venison over here well you know yeah what what do they why don't they just stay here <laughs> yeah why not come back it's just like feeding a squirrel outside your front door it'll come back now now that you fed it it knows it's going to get food so it's going to yeah. keep coming back yeah. It's just yeah. gonna make me yeah make that spot a home. So anyway, um, yeah, <clears throat> like I say, um, uh, give me the details, you know, and uh, what you saw. And, you know, that would be fun. I'm, I'd love to hear Kevin question someone. <laughs> I just I just want to hear that. That's all. I have to tape that. Somebody yeah, has I was to gonna tape say. That one. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, there, yeah, yeah. That would be a master class in how to ask questions too, because you're pretty good. You, you, you're not going to, um, 
just go, okay, I believe you. You're you're gonna you're gonna investigate things down to you know hardware if if need be. Well, yeah. What you know? What's the weather? You know what was you know? Yeah, was there fog? Was it raining? <clears throat> what was you know? What was the weather conditions? Um, just you know, down to the details like that. And um, so yeah, it you know, like what's that saying? You know, only only believe half of what you see. Mm. So <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Give me the details. Let's let's go yeah. over this. Let's discuss um, then. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, the philosophical side don't believe anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, huh? Yeah. Uh, I I flunked. No, I didn't fail philosophy, but I was just uh, I can't think that much. Plus, I'm not sure how it would apply to Sasquatch. I mean, if this thing doesn't exist, what the hell are we? What the what are people chasing? You know. I think that's the most interesting question to me. You know, let's say these things don't exist and there's credible people that we believe. Okay. Well then what are people who are having these close encounters? And I'm sorry for, I don't consider something out of the corner of your eye, 300 yards away as a close encounter. Yeah. Something two football fields away is not a face to face encounter. And believe me, there's popular Bigfooters who will tell you that. Yeah, that's or it was me. once described as that. Oh, he had a face-to-face -face encounter in the military. Yet it was 280 yards away. Okay. Yeah, um, that 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 may be a sighting, but that's not my definition of face-to-face -face either. You know, right? So, yeah. So I'll yeah, twenty yards, fifty yards. Well, yeah. Well, yards too much for a face to face. Well, what? What again? What was? What's the weather conditions? Is was it sunny, um, mm -hmm. or did you have a spotlight on it or something? A, a flashlight um, that that had a that has high lumens. You know, it's very bright flashlight. So, what are the details? Did you see teeth? Yeah. yeah did, did you exactly? Did, see did, did you see it? Did you see it blink? You know. Did you see it? Was it daylight? Could you see the color of the eyes? What were the eyes then like? Um, you know, and that fascinates me too. The anatomy like that, and especially like the eyes, um, you know, and, and their sense of taste. I mean, you know, they've been supposedly they eat things that uh, that would be bitter to us and, and that. But so, yeah, that, I wonder about those things with the anatomy. But yeah, what what size were their pupils? you know, of their eyes. So that's close enough then for me to be a face to face, you know? So yeah, yeah give me the details of, of that, you know, or did you have a sighting then of something moving across the hillside 100 or 200 yards away? But, um, but yeah, face to face. Yeah. But Oh, I think Brent knows, knows what I was referring to. Well, I do. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, it was but, originally 600 yards, but changed it. Yeah. See, but Kev, you see, I restrain myself. You see, I don't name names. All right. Because. Very good. Very good. I'm a very little podcast, but, you know, little birdies, you know, they go. Yeah. That person was told some podcast. They go, well, no, somebody's got to mention my podcast. I could use some controversy for some subscribers over here. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so I'm not in it for controversy, to be honest with you, because I could have just done that from the get go, you know. Yeah, but that's good. You're great. You're when you're when great. when these when these slight changes, when people tell me that, oh no, I I really believe it. I'm like, how do how? Just because he doesn't say it on any other. It's written down on his website. That it was a face to face at 280 yards. That's bullshit. That's not a face to face encounter. Please. Sorry. Yeah. Actually, I'm not sorry because I'm not the one who made it up. But. Yeah, like I say, there's you know, there's sightings and you know, and 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 but then, but yeah, if you want to talk about face to face, well, to me, then like I say, then then 
there's going to be detail. You know, if, if something was looking <clears throat> around a tree at you and, 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 and it was really face to face, it was really close, <clears throat> then, you know, give me the details. Right. Some people don't have details to give. Yeah. Uh, all right. You had a sighting. I'll agree that, that it's a sighting then. And that's why I like language. That's why I told you I'm into language and how people use words because yeah. it's important because it means something, you know? We have people on the internet who say mean things to people, and the next thing you know, they're gone because someone was mean to them needlessly. Yeah. So, yeah, words do matter. Especially if you're just describing an experience with Sasquatch. Because people are going to go, wait, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't add up. I mean, is there just like people don't want to hold each other accountable because they want to keep relationships intact? I mean, that could be part of it, too. And I could see that you like someone, you don't want to kind of hurt their feelings or anything. But the truth itself doesn't have feelings, you know? Yeah. I like and, say I just would keep spreading or spreading the word or putting my message out there to, you know, to to keep investigating, uh, doing that detective work, and 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 you know, do it well or the best that you can, um, and and again get more video rather than just you know. Um, um, uh, uh, still pictures. You know, carry a, a cloth tape measure in your pocket so that you can, you know, lay that down there by the track, uh, a possible track, rather than just, you know, putting your foot by it or, and, and just don't take that one picture uh, looking down into a track with your boot next to it. Um, you know, take pictures from several different angles uh, to get that, the different light angles. Uh, it really does make a difference. Uh, I'm not a certified tracker, but I've had three classes uh, or, you know, or, or been with the three different certified trackers and that they will tell you that, you know, the light makes the light angle makes all the difference in the world. And so that's why out there uh, when I'm hiking at, at noon and the sun is right up above you high in the sky that's the, the worst time for looking at tracks because um, you want light angle then mm -hmm. too. So, yeah. And then you told me something interesting. Something is premiering soon. Oh, yeah. And there might be a Kevin Llewellyn sighting on TV. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. There they had be. me. Yeah. They had me tied up. No. <laughs> yeah. Tie up that big foot, you know, when you, when you grab him. Anyway, no. Um, yeah. The, this Sunday, um, uh, June 26th on Discovery Plus, uh, Jack Osborne uh, has done his Night of Terrors. You know, he's done uh, paranormal shows and, mm -hmm. you know, ghost hunting and, and that. Well, he's, he's got Night of Terror Bigfoot. And they uh, filmed in North Idaho. And my part was that um, I had a uh, campfire talk, a discussion uh, around a nighttime campfire with Jack Osborne and Jason Muse. And uh, it was a blast. Uh, they were great. Uh, uh, Jason Muse is a character. He's, <laughs> he's fun. Yeah, you know, they're probably going to be goofing around uh, in the show some because just their personalities, but it was great. But like I say, just my part was, was to have the discussion uh, non-scripted. I didn't know uh, what they were going to ask. And they started out by saying, Jack says, said, well, um, and so I want to go on record on your podcast here of, of my what my response was. But Jack starts out and so, so you're the uh, expert in this region on Sasquatch. And in my mind, I went, oh, no. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and I said, so I replied something like, well, there are no experts uh, in this 
topic of Bigfoot in this field of Bigfooting. Uh, you know, I can't remember exactly what I said, but it was something like that. I mean, some people may have many more years of experience uh, than other people, but and and so whether that'll make the final cut, uh, who knows? Who knows what the final cut will be? Um, you know, maybe I'll have 60 seconds. I don't know. Maybe, maybe the, uh, my part ended up on the cutting room floor. You know, maybe they mm -hmm. pushed it. Yeah. <laughs> maybe yeah, they you, pushed yeah. the. You're going to make me I, get Discovery Plus just to see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> I get, um, just yeah. 20 seconds. <laughs> yeah. And, well, you know, yeah, Kevin's I, best I, answer for the show they is have, this. They may have pushed the delete button on, yeah, on me too. But, but like I say, it was, it was pretty neat. Um, uh, it was a blast. And, um, uh, long discussion uh, and and what's more fun than sitting around a campfire and talking about Sasquatch? Um, so yeah, it was it was a great part. But but like I say, that was my part. Uh, but then of course it's it's like a two hour show. So did you just wander onto the campfire and and be like, hey, I'm a big. How, how'd they find you? Um, well, through the, the BFRO reports oh, that, okay. that are out there. Yeah. They, they, oh, they probably read your reports and said. So, yeah. Quite. So they, they read reports uh, oh. and they were, yeah. In fact, uh, one of the witnesses or one of one couple uh, that they were, I, I, I guess it's going to make the final cut or I hope it does, but, but this one couple uh, that they were interviewing, uh, they, got a hold of them or found out about them because I interviewed them for a report. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so it all, you know, all goes round and round, you know, uh, then reports, witnesses. And so it was they, a complete they, accident. They picked a logical researcher. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it's like, off with Adam Davies. No, <laughs> yeah, well, it's like, well, I'm just saying, cause it sounds more li like it'll be, not your part, but it would be more uh, inter an entertainment show. Yeah, well, I yeah. Or well, were they, they really they, going they, out there? They got some, yeah. They and they they f had some, uh, and I don't know what, how many times they went out, but but when we were having the campfire discussion, um, he did have some kind of a vocalization, but it was it was like on his phone. I think it was on his cell phone, and and. He, you know, he's going to listen to this. And, and I'm like, you know, and the campfire's gone and it's on this, mm -hmm. this scratchy, you know, smartphone. And I'm like, <clears throat> and I'm like, uh, well, I can't, I, I, <laughs> I don't know what that is. I can't tell, you know, so, but they did get some, I guess, some vocalizations or got something. And I, you know, I wasn't in that part uh, of the show. It would and so it'd hey, be interesting. All respect interesting if he went out there. Who cares if he's filming? Hey, you know, you go out in what? the forest, you go out in the forest. <laughs> what, you know? What's that? What? Well, if, if he went out in the forest hiking, you know, hey, more power to him for that. Oh, yeah. They were, oh, yeah. They were out there. And, you know, so like I say, yeah, it takes place in northern Idaho. And, um, yeah, uh, premieres this Sunday on Discovery Plus. Well, that's neat. Because people yeah, like him. He seems to be, uh, uh, likable you know yeah they yeah it was good yeah, i could say it was great and uh the, the two of them together uh jack and Applied. jason and, yeah yeah and so it's yeah like that but um but anyway that was my part um and we'll see what the final cut you know is on sunday but uh but yeah the it was a blast and and so i hope you know when you you get to see some northern Idaho, you know, listen, then, they're going to put regional expert up on the screen anyway, dude. Yeah. <laughs> well. And the, and they'll probably spell, they'll probably spell my name wrong, but oh well. <laughs> listen, all right, your name's not that easy, especially when the capital L doesn't do that line at the bottom. Man, one <laughs> time I was on, and it's just like, did I, is that an, a capital I or am I doing L? Ugh. Forget it. <laughs> yeah, Kevin spell his own name. I'm just surprised I pronounced it right the first time. Yeah, you got it. Well, so, so yeah. Anyway, I can, yeah, it you 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 know it's it's rugged. It's rugged country. You know, uh, North Idaho, um, uh, and and people. I've even asked people too uh, from out of state. I'll even you know, well, well, what do you think Northeast Washington is like? You know what. Do you think it's nothing but wheat fields or 
apple orchards, you know, what do you, what do you think, uh, um, uh, what that's like, you know, in North Idaho and Northeast Washington and it, you know, it's rugged. You know? Yeah. Do you, yeah. See, you, you still work with the BFRO, right? Yeah. Yeah. He still does it. Raptor crazy. You know, it, it's tricky because I read some reports on, on, on BFR and I'm like, that's not a very good job. And then it can go to someone like you and I go, okay, that's a good job. Oh, thank you. So it's not like, you know, everybody's, you know, some people are only doing phone interviews, you know, and sometimes those aren't the best, but it's what you got. And that's what the BRFRO does. But, you know, yeah. um, I've yeah, also, I've been told by many BRFRO investigators, listen, whatever makes makes the website, I have my own notes. I have my own, I keep my own stuff besides what I file on the BFRO. Oh, well, yeah. You mean like if I'm, when I'm interviewing somebody or then right. like my notes, Oh yeah. Um, there's, there's little things then just that, that about the person's background or, uh, I mean, I don't want to go into a lot of details, no, but, but, but yeah, I'm but just I've, saying yeah, that I've that's, got, the, that's what I've heard. And you can confirm that. Oh yeah. I've got, I've practice. got stuff because again, that's where I'm, I'm, I've got my own, I want to know the details. I want to know, you know, like, well, were they misidentifying something and, 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 and we're just volunteers. And, and so we're doing the best we can. Uh, and, and I just do the best I can, you know, then when I'm interviewing somebody, but, but yeah, I want to, you know, I want to see what they're, you know, what they're like. And so, yeah, I'm taking notes <laughs> like crazy when, when I'm talking to somebody. Oh yeah. Uh, not good old Raptor. Yeah, he mentioned it last time he was on, but you never know. He could have left by then, so it's no problem. <laughs> he could have he could have start the Kevin Bigfoot RO, you know? <laughs> you know, who knows, you know? He could have branched out on his own. I don't know. I did have um a suspicion that um if People aren't actually seeing a Sasquatch. Then we must be talking about something psychological. But then even, I, you can't have, it's not going to be, I, I, you know, it baffles my mind to think that. It's yeah. just like, what is it? Is it, 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 there's no, I mean, we would have discovered a plant given off of like an, I don't know, an hallucinogenic effect by now or something. Yeah, no, it's, 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 you know, people are going to, to struggle with, you know, like uh, after they see something like hunters are not going to go back into the woods, you know, some hunters um, <clears throat> like that. Um, having a, having a sighting like that from their tree stand or whatever their deer stand, um, you know, and, and people are going to be afraid of, of, of saying anything because they're, you know, of course going to have fingers pointed at them and say, Oh, you're crazy. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're saying you saw a Bigfoot, you know? Oh, yeah. You're nuts. And um, so, yeah, you, you were drunk or something. Um, but, um, and, but, and I've interviewed people then too, that, you know, years and years uh, they said nothing. Um, uh, a couple reports that come to mind is, you know, as the, the one person uh, as a boy scout, you know, he saw one, you know, drinking out of the stream and it was, you know, with the cupped hand and drinking water that way, um, in full moonlight. Um, and, you know, he didn't, he didn't come forward. I mean, he told like his best friend and that was it. And for years and years and years, you know, but then he wanted to, you know, get it on record as a, in a form of a BFRO report. Um, another one I can think of was, was this one, uh, one lady and, and she sounded elderly. I, I did not ask her age, but, um, 
uh, I, I was being polite and, and yeah, I, I was just going to say that <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah. I didn't want to get in. I didn't go there, but yeah. But as, as a, as a teenager or she were 12 years old or that she was and on horseback with her mom and they had this sighting and her mom told her, don't you ever, ever say to this about this to anybody speak about this to anybody. And so, you know, people go through their whole life and, you know, they, you know, and, and maybe they forgot a few details or things like that. But when they've seen some of these things, I mean, when you, when you see this thing with a cut, with an arm and a cupped hand drinking out of a stream, I mean, you know, that's etched in your memory for your life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like I say, you know, time goes by and yeah, they may forget some things, but they, but they will remember the movement uh, of what they saw uh, of the Bigfoot of the figure. And yeah. So yeah, people, you know, it definitely will affect people and, and that way. And they, they don't want to, like I say, be called crazy. Uh, they'll keep it to themselves until they feel like it's time, you know, then to, uh, to go on record but um yeah it's but then yeah but then are there some people that yeah like you know well yeah they're i mean <laughs> this one guy was like well yeah i looked at it was on my couch with my beers and i looked out my slider you know and out into the uh, into the back 40 and Bigfoot was walking across my my yard in my back 40, but but it's like, well, okay, you know, you started out by sitting there, it's telling me that you're sitting there with your beers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you understand that? Yeah, this this might be put down as a misidentification. <laughs> yeah, it might be. It was it, a giant. It will, it will be put for you. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it will will be put down as a misidentification. Perhaps the best approach is maybe to hear people out, which most most skeptics are willing to hear people out because you want the story. And then you want to see where their thinking's coming from. And then you can apply logic and reason to it and go, okay, this doesn't make sense. Or, hey, this does make sense. They're owning exactly what they're saying. Hey, they are credible. Doesn't that exactly mean they've seen a Sasquatch, but it means it's, they've seen something that they are owning that they saw. They're not accessing anything where it's make-believe land. Yeah. Yeah, and to yeah. me, that's that's the best approach. I call them the portal people. It's just, it's, it's my sense of humor. It's not, it's not a uh, an attack. If I attack you, you will know it. Well, and just and and we talked earlier about you know if you can get more than just one thing, then mm -hmm. two and and you know is there is did you have an encounter or some activity rather, and then did you find tracks? Uh, then too, um, and and then also keeping a journal. The importance of keeping a journal. Um, and in my the book that I wrote there, incessantly bigfooting, I do have the one thing that I that that happened with me, um, and and it came right out of my journal. I made the notes right after it happened, and so I actually have times and these different things that took place, and. And I feel that it's almost uh, more valuable than an, than a sighting, and I call it the I'll always call it the interrupted uh, Bigfoot deer hunt because we I feel we interrupted Bigfoot and and with this deer on a hillside and it was uh, in the dark after dark but like I say you know when you when you read that you'll see the details and you'll see the importance of keeping a journal. So that when you have <clears throat> something, when you have activity, when you have an encounter, um, you know, then get it right down in a journal and you'll be glad you did, you know, because then you can go back and, and look at those details and, 
Yeah, you do lots of things. You can yeah. match up pines with audio. You can put video. You know, oh yeah, match that's up what, pines yeah. with what other people have heard. Yeah. Oh, and that's know? one of the main. Yeah, that's one Especially of the main. Especially if everyone things. else is keeping a journal, it'd be interesting. To, you know, that comparison would be interesting too. Yeah. Then you have the verbal comparisons to the notes too. Yeah. You do a lot of that, but I don't think a lot of people are doing that. No. Yeah. And and so. I mean, and my journal is, is a combination of a journal and and notes that have been written in my tent at 6 a.m., you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, of something, yeah, that I heard, something that was going on or whatever. So, but, um, but yeah, uh, more people keep a journal like that. And, um, I, yeah, that'll help too. That'll, you know, keep the investigating going. Raptor Crazy asks, when you go out and interview people, how many are out in the middle of nowhere and how many of them are close to town? Very few close to town. Most of them are out, you know, then, yeah, hiking a trail, uh, hunting uh, on horseback, <clears throat> excuse me, things like that. Um, yeah, so I don't think I've ever... I'm trying to think. I don't think I've ever really interviewed anybody uh, of a dumpster diver Bigfoot. Um, you know, Bigfoot. yeah, eating out of the out of the. They gotta dumpster. eat something, man. <laughs> you know, they're, they're homeless. <laughs> so, um, but um, I'm sorry. I, you know, well, but you know, they're opportunists. You know, they're gonna you know gonna eat something out of you know whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, there was this you know, this one famous sighting in Northeast Washington, well, not famous. It, it, you know, is, was, it was out there in the grapevine and it was, it was the Bossberg Cripplefoot. Mm -hmm. And you can, you know, you can check out that history or that, that in Northeast Washington was in 69, 1969. And in, in 1971, there was another sighting and, and I drive by this spot all the time. And there was, there was a, this white out along the highway and way back then um, in the seventies and that the uh, county or the state had garbage cans there. And this one lady uh, right at dusk uh, was driving by and there was this upright figure pulling stuff out of the garbage cans. And it's just north of Bossburg. And so um, I've always thought, hmm, <laughs> you, she should have stopped and told him to lift its foot. You know, did it have a cripple yeah. foot? Uh, was it that the would same? have been best. Yeah, we, uh, <laughs> like, hey, was that cripple foot? Yeah, um, get out of the car, man. We need to know what these things are, all right? Was, yeah, you know, did he leave like in whatever it was, December of 69, you know, he left cripple foot tracks in the snow, and then like was he seen again in the summer of 71? Um, but but anyway, um, yeah. It, uh, otherwise, like I say, this, this, back to the question, it's like, yeah, it seems like, um, you know, I've interviewed hunters. Uh, I've interviewed, you know, former law enforcement, um, uh, wildlife biologists um, then, too. So, yeah, I've interviewed, you know, those are, you know, people on four wheelers. Um, for example, mm -hmm. I, I remember one report where he was law enforcement, um, but he was out with his buddies on, on the weekend and it was getting dusk. And they were headed back and uh, his buddies were ahead of him on their four wheelers, you know, and they were, they went, they were going on. And, and so <clears throat> he came up to the, this corner and um, from behind the one stump, then the figure stood up, stood upright and, you know, did the arm thing, you know, the hands like this. And, um, but yeah, they were out there on the, in the backwoods on their four wheelers. Yeah, well, you know, we have a few stories here, but, you know, I think one of the last ones here in Connecticut was just someone driving down the highway, saw 
saw a Sasquatch and they were like, well, they're credible. And I'm like, um, I think that's optical. Was it, was it chasing I, deer? Was it chasing no, deer? It was, it was just, it was just, it was just off road because they're driving on the highway. And you have these, you know, you have these nice areas, but you know, the fur just kind of matches what would be out there for the foliage, you know, the browns and stuff. And this was brown. And I'm like, I mean, I wouldn't, you know, her boy, her boyfriend didn't see it, but he was driving, obviously. But you know what's getting an elbow? If I'm looking at a freaking Sasquatch, we're pulling over. <laughs> yeah. So they didn't see uh, they didn't see movement or anything. Yeah, there wasn't like details, uh, good enough details for me, and you know, I'm waiting for a Connecticut researcher to finally, you know, be like, "Shut up! Stop saying there's no Sasquatch in Connecticut." You know? Yeah. Well, I'm going to say there's no Sasquatch anywhere because it's not proven proven to exist. Yeah. Well, that yeah, that's the problem. I mean, I'm I'm going to say I believe people. Therefore, I believe I'm I'm convinced that something's out there. Yeah. Yeah, there's, you know, that's the thing, you know, it's, we're, we're chasing something here that has not yet been, been proven to exist. Um, there's a, a flow of evidence, you know, where, mm -hmm. where you'll have, you know, just, you know, eyewitness reports, and, and then audio, and then tracks, and hair, you know, and then, but then, at the top of that, of that flow of evidence, the, the evidence, you know, that we want, then, of course, it would be then bones, you know, a skeleton or just, or, you know, even just a skull or whatever. And, and so, um, you know, that, you that, that would be. What was that show? That fake entertaining show? We need that trapper guy to build a Bigfoot trap, man. <laughs> we'll, we'll get him that way, man. <laughs> that would be great. Imagine if some schmuck like that freaking got him. Actually, I shouldn't have called him that because he's probably a really awesome human being. Um, but imagine if somebody like that got one, it'd be like, oh, why you, man? No one's going <laughs> to believe this, right? Oh, that's probably what will happen. You know, just, yeah. Or Someone we don't believe is going to freaking catch a Sasquatch or something. It'd, <laughs> it'd be like, oh, why him, Colorado Bigfoot or somebody? I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I left Come the on. door left the door to my camper open, and when I came back, Bigfoot was inside my camper, so I slammed the door, and uh, I got him in my camper. You know, <laughs> and it'll be true. <laughs> it's like, huh? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Ridiculous. Damn. Yeah, I, uh, but I but it, I I enjoy the mystery. You know, that's yeah, that's the, the mystery and the, and the friends that I've made uh, over the years. You know, um, then. The, expeditions and, and such and um and and uh, meeting people at conferences and that i i i don't go to a lot of conferences but but um but yeah it's uh yeah the mystery of it and uh, i want more i want to just keep yeah. getting out there yeah the, the mystery and then like i say yeah and, and making friends yeah yeah i don't have any friends so. no no <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you got me. Yeah, hey, I got Kevin. Ha -ha. Yeah, no, I got a few people. Messenger me anytime. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, oh, I like talking to you. I just got, unless, I don't know. I fall. Unless it, and, and the shoulder's fine, right? Unless I'm in the woods, um, you know. But, uh, but yeah, it, it, like I say, um, you know, pretty much my whole life then, you know, just, you know, being a, following the topic, being an enthusiast. And, um, you know, my dad was quite the outdoorsman and, you know, he hunted all over, you know, I mean, you know, he, he would say like, you know, well, I've hunted all of Eastern Washington, every mountain in Eastern Washington, and I've never seen a Bigfoot. And, and, you know, that wasn't much of an exaggeration. He probably hunted most of the mountains in Eastern yeah. Washington. Yeah. And, but, uh, but he didn't believe in them. But, um, when I would go out with him, you know, it's like, I'm just like, you know, kind of keep my eyes peeled and, you know, looking for maybe a track or something. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but yeah. Uh, hey, dad, look at this track. What do you think now? Huh? Huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that would have been great. Yeah. His response would have been, his response would have been, shh, you're scaring the deer away. You know? yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Be quiet when we're deer hunting. 
<laughs> yes, be, yeah, always be quiet because <laughs> animals have great hearing. Did you guys know that? And that's the truth. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. We don't have anything anymore. I live by the beach and we used to get the deer and stuff from a marsh. They used to live in a marsh around here and the city cut down the marsh. And uh, the few deer we had after they cut down the marsh, it was sad. The deer kind of lost their minds. One came running down the sidewalk and into the ocean water one time. It was just like, whoa. It's like, oh, man. The marsh area was ugly. It was getting out of control. So I understood it. But they could have done something, you know, move the deer. Maybe they did. I don't know. Yeah. And uh, a lot of problems with coyotes. Coyotes coming from the cities because people are just encroaching so much. And let me tell you something, man. I was walking home from work one time. And a coyote came out of the marsh. At first, I was like, because I, I used to walk everywhere. So I'm like, I wonder whose dog that is. <laughs> yeah. And it stopped on the sidewalk where I was going to uh, as I was walking home. And I always, I always walk curbside for some reason. It's not the way you're supposed to walk. But I walk curbside because of the street lights, so I could see. Because if you walk inside where the marsh was overhanging, it's dark and stuff. And I always want to make sure that there's no crazy over on the side. Because <laughs> you get those people, man. And I'm looking at this thing. I'm like, that's big. Oh, yeah. oh wait. that's not... I literally could have went down and just pet the damn thing. Whoa. But I was... I'm not an outdoorsman. So I'm like, I don't know if a coyote would do anything to me. I don't think so. But it just stood there and didn't look at me. But I, I got the height of it. So I looked down and I, oh, that's a coyote. And that's a big coyote. Oh, boy. So I called my boss. He goes, yeah, there, yeah, everything got pushed down. There's all kinds of sightings now of coyotes and shit. And I'm like, oh, yeah. keep your small dogs inside, people. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's about it. But he's yeah. like, if, if it was just waiting for a car to go by, I think it was heading to where the garbage cans were at a conference center. That's and, what I well, out the last few years out here too, we've had so many wildfires. And so, you know, what is that doing? You know, where's that pushing the wildlife and, 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 and Bigfoot yeah. then. And so, yeah, we've had, you know, so. <laughs> okay. I'm, should not reveal any secrets, but yeah, I'll be camping with that guy and just here in, in uh, three, four weeks. Um, oh, all right. So, yeah, um, uh, great guy. But anyway, um, yeah, uh, but yeah, the even, you know, last summer, you know, I, the famous Bumping Lake area, you know, if you've mm -hmm. heard of Bumping Lake in Washington yep. State, yeah. And uh, yeah, big fire went through up through there and uh it was up on top uh, of the one ridge line and um but but the bigfoot investigators you know think that that is one of the ridge lines where there's a family unit or or where where they maybe hang out uh up there too but but yeah uh, one big fire you know went through there and went to the north and and so um yeah but but we'll see you know um you know three four years after fire three four five years like that then the, all the new vegetation comes mm -hmm. up yeah the deer are going to move back in there following you know the new vegetation all the new growth of stuff <clears throat> and if bigfoot likes uh, venison then they'll be following they'll the deer back, back. Yeah. they'll be back yeah they'll be back in so hopefully if they escaped if they, yeah. if they didn't escape the fire, then the government came and got the bones, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I had to sneak or, that in there. or volcano eruptions like Mount St. Helens. Oh, um, but um, but yeah, it um it'll it's it, it'll be interesting here to to see if there's more sightings, more class A sightings. But but I mean there's we've got the Washington Cascade Mountains out here and stuff, and you know, Oregon Cascades and and you know north idaho on into western montana uh, you know there's just there's so much area um so many canyons for them to hide in 
And um, so, yeah, I was actually, I ran into, so I, was on, I was hiking here a month ago and ran into a lady and she was talking about, about that too, that she saw this, that it had to be like a, a coyote wolf um, blend oh. or something that she, yeah, that she saw one uh, like that. Oh yeah. This coyote was bigger than my German shepherd. The one I saw. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Cause coyotes around here. Yeah. I mean, they're not that they, you know, even the males, they don't weigh, you know, that much, you know, they, Oh no, they're this, not, they're this not, fucker was big. Whoa. That's why I thought it was a dog. Wow. And then I saw its face. And I'm like, uh, I think he's going to the garbage can all every day. So he's probably eating it up, you know, Yeah. or was, you know, of yeah. course they come down because us people, we're so scared. We call right away. And if they don't come right away, we call animal control again and again and again, because we're scared of everything. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. they probably rounded them up. Like we had a red fox down here one time hanging around the rocks and people are like, Oh my God. I'm like, it's a fox. It's not going to bother you. It's a little guy. I'm like, what's it going to do? It's not going to do anything to you. It's <laughs> up on the rock spider trees. It's not going to do nothing. Yeah. If anything, it'll get acclimated to us and it'll be the, the neighborhood fox. Relax. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. That was the only, cause they're so cute. Yeah. <laughs> well, we just, in, you know, yeah, we keep building out into the, into the forest, you know, so there's, you're going to have wildlife around um uh, around these the housing developments and stuff that are that are being put out there um but um but yeah like i say there's there's just so many places for bigfoot to to go yeah see i almost pet one last year ran right to me and by me at a park i thought it was a husky mix yeah i thought it was a dog whoa until i looked at its face all I had to do is lean over. I was like, oh, please don't look at me because you're you're big. <laughs> but the fact that it, we, I could just walk and it wouldn't look at me, I was surprised. I was like, damn, this thing's just focused on what it wants to do, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it was it was on a mission. Yeah, it didn't care about you. It, yeah. it didn't care, but it knew enough to wait. That's why I think it probably for a few days it had done this and recognized, all right, I got to wait for the car to go by and then whoop. It quick too. He was just. I'm like, oh, thank God. I I I admit, I I started running home. Yeah. yeah. I didn't wait to see if it was going to come back because I don't know if coyotes mess with people or not. Yeah, they they. Uh, but well, no, I was not, I was usually not with people, but you don't want. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I wasn't going to take the chance. I don't yeah, know because no. you don't want to get I didn't or know. anything. Yeah, but it reminds me of uh, too. Uh, you're talking about how fast then they can go, or just, or then they can be gone, or or they can they can hide in plain. Oh sight. yeah, he was gone in like two seconds. Yeah, and I'm it, like, holy yeah. shit. Reminds me of this of this photo that the Idaho um, Department of Wildlife put out a few years ago, and uh, it was this rock uh, scrubby uh, type terrain, and they're like, you know, find the coyote in the photo, you know, and I mean, yeah, so hiding in plain sight, I mean, it just, it blended in, you know, you, you know, it's one of those, you know, find the hidden object. Yep. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. There's a when coyote. You see it, sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah there yeah, really is a coyote in this photo, you know, you find it. And so it's like, well, why not Bigfoot? You know, they know when to stand still or be stationary or get down on all fours. Um, you know, they can just, they can hide in, in plain sight, so to speak, then too. So, Yeah, that's why I took off. A group attacked a man a few weeks ago here. They think people are feeding them. Oh, no. That's why. I'm, like, I'm not taking a chance, man. Yeah. Don't feed the coyotes. The fox was all right, man. But coyotes, <laughs> right. the fox, the fox was cute. We keep, actually, the coyote was cute too. That's why I wanted to pet it at first. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Leave the wildlife alone. Yeah. yeah. Yellowstone National Park is not a petting zoo. <laughs> and so, and so. For some reason, my empathy meter goes down when I see people taking pictures 10 feet from bison. <laughs> and then the bison go, and I don't feel bad for you. 
Yeah, well, yeah. How many signs are there that they tell you? Maybe, unless you forgot how to hear and read, it's your own damn fault. Yeah. Well, that's a face-to-face -face sighting <laughs> with a bison. <laughs> with a bison, bison squatch. So that's, yeah. So if you could only be that close to a Bigfoot, that's a face-to-face. -face. Yeah, I... I yeah, I mean, that would be the only thing. I'd be scared, probably. I mean, if, if you're, like, face-to-face -face and you see this thing, forget about it, man. Actually, I don't know if I'd be afraid. It's hard to say. But he, it, yeah. Because a lot of people are different, man. There's this guy on, on YouTube. Well, he used to be. There's been problems problem named Bigfoot Bob. And he got red eyes in the woods a couple times. And so he's like, damn it, it could be an owl. He did a recreate, you know, he went back to the place one time and he showed the eyes and stuff and the branches. And I'm like, I don't know. So I, I, I asked him, I said, um, that seems scary. Why would you even, you know, and he goes, no, nah, I'd, I'd, I'd run it down if I saw it with my own eyes instead of just reviewing on tape. I said, that sounds a little dangerous. He goes, yeah, but it's the only way to find out what it is. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I believe him. Yeah, yeah, he would, he would definitely, he would chase him to death if he had to. Yeah. That, <laughs> that's what I tell, that's what I tell myself that I would do if I, if I had the video going, if it was on video, and you know, if I could take off running after it to just even get another angle, um, whatever side view or back view or something, I'd get a couple different angles, and um, but yeah, I, I. I don't know if, if one was popped its face out 10 feet in front of me, I, I would like to think that I would say, you know, hi, Kevin, take like, my oh, picture. I, I, like, <laughs> oh, how are you doing? It's like, <laughs> it's, I'll see you later. <laughs> let's, yeah. Let's keep everything <laughs> calm here. Let's keep everything peaceful. Um, you know, but, um, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, but hopefully I, yeah. Um, then, then, yeah, then hopefully I try to remember to pull out the camera or, you know, pull out the video, get, get it something recorded, but yeah. Um, but I've never had that. I never had a feeling of dread, you know, mm. um, uh, you know, it's not to say, you know, that my heart rate hasn't been going, um, a million miles an hour, you know, and, uh, type thing. But, um, when my tent is shaking, and it's not just yeah. a bear, put yeah, not a bear pushing its nose into the side of my tent or anything like that. When my tent, is, you know, and there's no wind, and uh, and things like that happen. But so yeah, my heart rate gets going, but uh, but I've never had that feeling of dread uh, that people talk about, you know. Um, well, people can talk themselves into it too, and all of a sudden, the scary thing that could be something else is is a Sasquatch is senses my presence here. I'm, it's following me and stuff. And it's like, oh. well, that's why I like the the pheromone theory. That that I think then if 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 they're if you're coming close to them and and maybe they don't want you to come any further. Maybe they have a family unit back behind them or something. Um, and if they release pheromones. And we can't smell pheromones. That, mm -hmm. That's a whole nother world, you know, uh, that biology and that, uh, that's, a, that's a whole nother world that we're unaware of. And, um, but, you know, the wildlife, you know, dogs, cats, everything, you know, they're communicating by pheromones and, and deer and everything. So what if Bigfoot, though, uh, would release pheromones and all of a sudden you get close enough to where, like I say, we can't smell it, but it's triggering something in our in our subconscious. Oh, the molecule. Yeah, the and molecule. That, yeah, that our brain is, there. Yeah, our brain is going, wait a minute, something's wrong here. I should not go any further, you know. And that so like I say, I I like that pheromone theory. Yeah, I was supposed to have someone on, but they never showed up for the show to talk about that. To talk about the yeah the pheromones yeah the pheromones yeah. he was gonna yeah. try and collect the uh, pheromones from different animals and stuff and mm -hmm. I don't know what happened I always yeah. wanted him on I still want him on but 
I don't know. Yeah. Maybe he watched a couple of shows and said, ah, it's too naysayer for me, which is fine, you know. Yeah. I don't yeah, that, that'd be interesting, on, you know. That'd but be interesting. Was, That's a whole nother yeah. whole nother topic. Yeah. And he had he, he had interesting stories, you know. Eric Altman was at one of these things with the guy, and I'm like, I want to hear it about this. This is interesting. But I got two no shows, and I'm like, all right, the guy just doesn't want to come on. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. uh, you know, I got a good show out of it. I got a panel show out of it, and mm -hmm. I was yeah. like, this is great. Yeah, but, but that, so, yeah, yeah, he, he, yeah I, I, I wish he would. You know, I wish he would yeah. do that. Come on, like that, because yeah, it, it, uh, you know, I think it's really important out there. You know, the 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 pheromones. Uh, we just don't know. Um, <laughs> and, our resident, our resident skeptic. He's tough. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, like I say, that you know, the whole thing uh, like that, that, that things like that that we don't know about that, that's going on um, with the pheromones and that, um, you know, but that's a big topic. You know, yeah, that would be would be something to have on a podcast. Yeah, it would have been great, but I don't know. Maybe you had a different idea of what I, where I was going to go with it, but I was going to keep it in the biology area. Yeah, that's no, yeah. once people get into other cryptids, I kind of go. I do one cryptid here. It's called Sasquatch. Yeah, but you know. What? So what? Just, the next the next question is not about dog man. Right, exactly. <laughs> and I think some people, you know, I don't want to do. I don't want to cover other cryptids. Yeah, I research other. All right, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I well, I've seen that. slip it in on me. You know, I've seen, don't, yeah. don't slip it in on me. All right. I'll cut you right off the show. Yeah. That's well, why, I've seen, you know? I, yeah, I've seen, you know, I've seen that question asked too. It's like, well, well, why, why doesn't the BFRO have any reports on dog man? And it's like, and I'm like, well, where is dog man in Bigfoot field researchers organization? You know, right. um, huh? It's like, what well, I, you know, I'm going to talk about Bigfoot. I, you know, I, I don't know about about dog man, so. Okay, I'll bite. How about dog man? <laughs> yeah, there's the question. Oh, yeah, JP would. Yeah. He All would right. All right. Here there. we go. All right. Yeah. Dog man. Biologically, probably impossible. Evolutionary wise, probably impossible. Well, from what. Can you, um, can you, uh, a, a wolf with man legs? Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. I say no, damn it. Right. But yes, exactly. I like a good dog man story. <laughs> yes, a good dog man story. I like stories. I'm not against stories and people having fun and doing entertainment when you know it's story and entertainment. There's nothing wrong with that. I love it all, man. I watch those cheesy Bigfoot movies, man. I, I think they're great for what people can do. Some people have no budgets and they do all right. You know? Yeah. All right, guys. Hour 35 minutes. We're going to wrap it up here. Kevin, thank you for joining me. Thanks I, for, ha yeah, thanks for having me back. Talking to you. Oh, you're welcome anytime. I got to get more panel shows or something going, too. Sounds good. Yeah. Get a few people going. Yeah. Yeah, well, thanks for joining tonight. I appreciate it. And uh, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do next week. I'll probably just be on here flapping my gums. No. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, have a great night. I appreciate it very much. We'll see you all later.